Hi, in this tutorial we're going to talk about XML metadata and translators. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language and it's used to store GIS or geospatial, geospatial metadata using various standards. These standards can be easily viewed, edited, and manipulated within the confines of our catalog. You can see I've opened up an NC Camden Parcels Poly and we're looking at the metadata right here. If I go to customize in our catalog, our catalog options and click on the metadata tab, you can see the different types of standards that we have. We have the CSDGM, the content standard for digital geospatial metadata, Inspire, which is used over in Europe, 19139. We have a 19115 implementation. The 19115 is the description of geographic data sets while the 19139 is the XML implementation of metadata for basically the exchange of geospatial metadata as it is prepared in this XML format within the confines of GML you can see here. And we have an item description. So these are different ways. Up at the top here, I have an EPA metadata specification for North American profile for 19115. This was something that I downloaded from the EPA website, and this is the old EPA metadata that now works within the confines of our catalog, and it's able to do some validation. So what I wanted to basically focus on was the different forms of metadata that we have here. Um, if I go to export metadata, and this is the only one that I'm going to talk about, this is the only function I'm going to talk about. It's under an arc toolbox, it's under conversion tools, and metadata. We can see we can import, publish, synchronize, update. We have the old USGS metadata parser translator. We can validate it, but we can export metadata to different formats. We can look at the source metadata, and we can look at where our source metadata is going to be. And I'm just going to put an example right here because I already have some ready to go. And then I have a translator. If I click on translator, this talks about the different ways that we can convert from these different standards to another standard that we're looking at. So you can see the different standards here. We have ArcGIS to FGDC, ArcGIS to ISO 19139, ESRI ISO to ISO 19139. So we have these different translators here. And it's a little tricky if you don't know where they're located. So if I click on the locate button, I can go to my ArcGIS directory, depending upon where you installed it. I think for me it's under Program Files x68, uh, x86, desktop, bin, oh, up at the top here, metadata, I'm sorry, desktop, and then under translators. So you can see these different translators right here. Okay, that we're talking about. So this talks about the location to the translators because this is going to be important when we try to programmatically convert these metadata to another format for the purpose of exporting, locating it within these different tags. And I can convert on this and I can give it an appropriate name. Okay, so I might give something here with the postscript like underscore 19139 or whatever I'm looking at here. Okay, and when I click OK, it's going to run export this particular metadata to this particular format and then we can view this access this programmatically if need be and you can see I've, I've got some output that I ran here I downloaded the public schools GIS data from the North NC1 map and I exported as a GML file GML stands for geography markup language which is used by the OGC the FGC the ESRI ISO and the 19139 and I've just opened these up right here. Okay? And this is what it looks like in FGDC. If you remember a long time ago with metadata, it had the seven basic categories, the ID info, the data quality information, the distribution information. And I can open these up. And this is what we call, these are tagged elements. So you can see the tags right here. The tags occur between the less than sign and the greater than sign. Long time ago, if you ever looked at HTML, the language for web pages, this is what HTML looks like. You can see a web page on the left, and then you can see the HTML source code on your right here. So you see anything with a 
you can see anything between the less than and greater than sign is the tag that basically tells you how the page is divided and how it's going to appear. And then outside of those tags, the actual text that you see on that. So we have a formatting and then we have the actual content. So when we start to look at this metadata right here, these are what we call nested. So within the entire metadata, well, the entire metadata is going to be at the first tag. And if we go all the way down to the bottom, if we have that front slash metadata, that means we close that particular tag. Okay, so the same thing with the ID information. So this ID info, citation, site info, so the site info tag, which has an origin, a pub date, a title, a geoform, a pub info, and then this pub info stops, another citation is nested within the site info, and this site info is nested within the citation, and this citation is nested within the ID info. And other elements of this ID info, this particular tag or the description, we have an abstract the purpose and the supplementary information contained within that particular description. Because remember, metadata describes, okay, it transcends descriptive, formational information, and distribu distributive information for our geospatial metadata sets. And the way that data are organized and stored, as well as how we can distribute it and contact the people who created and created these particular files. And so you can see, and if you ever look at a GIS, if you ever look at a web page, you can right mouse click and view the source, and you're not going to see something that looks like this because this is specific to GIS metadata. But our catalog is able to import this so we can view this in our catalog. Okay, so our catalog can import this, it knows this is FGDC, and it'll put this in the proper places in our art catalog right here. So it looks nice, neat. And accessible. So this is just an example of FGDC because this is going to be important if we want to access these programmatically which we'll talk about in our next tutorial because there's about 400 and something elements right here and we don't want to access all of these. We only want to access the special ones. But this is the FGDC XML. Looks a little bit different here. This is the Esri ISL. So when I ran that export metadata using the different translator you can see the different tags that we have here. Okay. You can see over here, these are attribute labels here, but I didn't see the one, I didn't see the, I see the element all the way at the top that says um, metadata, but I have some Esri tags here. I, have, I don't see the distribution information yet. It may be down here somewhere else, but these different XML standards store the data differently. Here's another one here. This is the GML. As I go down, and you can see some of the elements here. We kind of recognize this. We see our bounding boxes right here. So, you know, we're just storing basically the same information differently depending upon the XML format that we have. Okay. And the last one that we have here is the 19139. Okay. So you can see the you know, beginning tags. We, ha we have the beginning tags. We have those ending tags. But you, you don't see the word metadata up at the top. You see the end. The, the word MD underscore metadata, so it knows what it's working with. It has a link here to the W3.org, the OpenGML. So you can see some of these parameters within each of these tags. Okay, So these are called parameters within each of these tags here. Okay, so you can see the code list with the uh, ISO standard um, in this particular case here as we go down. But you can see the, the contact information, the individual names, but what I was getting at is these need to be accessed programmatically at some point in time if we were going to use Python to access you know, this particular element. So it's going to be important that we have a kind of a clear understanding of the translator that we've used and the output format that we used. Because if I try to look at something like descript information or description or abstract, over here in 19139, there might not be something here called abstract. Okay. I have something called descriptive keywords. I'm just doing a control F. Descriptive keywords, descriptive keywords. I don't see anything that says the word descript. I see something that's called description. So these are all going to be different 
And we're very lucky that ArcGIS and Arc, um, Arc Catalog, especially the metadata editor, is flexible and extensible to import these different formats. And then over in our metadata, our metadata tools, it's able to export those to a format that we want to work with.